Starting out in my coding career, uh, I had so much angst. I'm going to unpack the four key reasons why I struggled so much. These are the stories you don't really hear unless you sit down with a good friend. Relax, it takes everyone time to ramp up. I've just graduated and I am really excited but nervous to get into industry and have my very first job. I wear this outfit with these black skinny jeans four out of seven days of the week. It makes me feel confident and I really need that because as soon as I begin my job, I start to freak out. Now the team I was working on was amazing. The two founders were just wicked smart, super compassionate, but I started to get really, really stressed. The reason was it was a very small team and I had really big dreams of making huge contributions to that team, but things that I thought would take me like 20 minutes, ended up taking me two days. And as that was happening, I was realizing, wait, there is so much to get done in this startup and I'm not contributing. It was like, oh my gosh, not only am I failing, but I'm wasting their money and they should have hired someone else. And I started to like wonder if they were secretly angry at me, even though my team was just so friendly and so nice and so supportive because it was this mismatch. They knew that I was a new engineer and it would take me a long time to ramp up. But I accepted to make an impact right away. As you jump into your career, any experienced mentor is going to know it's going to take you weeks, if not a few months, to get up to speed and really start to contribute. So don't stress yourself out about that. No one is angry at you. And if they are frustrated with you, you're at the wrong job because if they're hiring you as a new developer, they're there to mentor you and guide you and help you to grow. How to give great time estimates. Don't. Story time. There's a mattress stuffed into the back of this white Prius and I'm asleep in the Prius, sometimes just literally in my black skinny jeans and this shirt. There's some frost on the windows and I'm parked in the middle of like Palo Alto. It's like the wealthiest place. I roll from the back seat into the front seat and I wipe some frost from the windows so I can see out and I get out, throw on my backpack, bike furiously to catch the Cal train up from Palo Alto to San Francisco where my job is. and. On that train, if I saw an open seat, rather than going to the stairs where people would beat me, I would jump up into the air, grab the side railing, pull myself up, and then spin sideways through the gap in the railing and jump into the seat before anyone could get there. And the reason why I wanted the seat so badly was because I was trying to catch up on work. I was stressed out of my mind. And because this is basically what kept happening. My boss, she'd walk up and she'd say, can you tweak this thing in the website? The task sounded really simple. So I'd tell her, for sure, this is super easy. I'd just uh, give me like a day to do it. And she'd smile and say, yeah, for sure. We'll check in tomorrow. And of course, as soon as I got into the code base, I would find just so many things I didn't understand. And the next day on the train, I'd be trying to dash and just furiously finish the task I'd received the day before so that when I got to work, I'd have it done. And then I did something that was even worse. When I got to work that second day without the task done, I would say, oh, it's almost done. I just need three more hours. And my boss, believing me, would say, okay, awesome. Take this three more hours and I'll have a new task for you. Of course, after three super stressful hours, I still wasn't done. And I would keep doing this over and over again, thinking that if I gave optimistic project deadlines, it would show them that I really cared and I was working really, really hard. The truth is, in software, it's really hard to estimate how long things will take because when you get into the code base, so many things can happen and there's so much complexity. It's especially hard when you're a beginner. So what you really wanna do is, hey, I'm not actually sure how long this would take me. I don't know the code base. Can I take a look at it and get back to you or could you help me estimate it? It's totally okay to say you don't know how long something will take because you pretty much don't. So by being honest, you'll save yourself stress and you'll save your teammates stress. Your actual job? Hit walls and package code up. Confession, I have a big addiction to chocolate. It was probably not a coincidence that my very first job was working with a chocolate factory. I got to go onto the factory floor, see people wrapping up chocolate, taste the chocolate. It felt amazing. But one thing that didn't feel amazing was that I had a totally twist expectation for what my job as a software engineer was to do. Now, if you think about that chocolate factory, they need to make chocolate and then ship that chocolate to the people who need it. That's a terminology you hear in coding, ship features to the users. But I wouldn't say shipping features is the bread and butter of what you do as a software engineer. If that were all it was, everyone would be able to be a software engineer. You just think of a feature, write some code, ship it, done. The truth is the two most important things you're doing as a software engineer are number one, hitting technical bugs that you have no idea how to solve. And number two, building reusable tools to build bigger things out of. 
hit technical walls, debug, repeat. So back to the chocolate factory, I saw them creating amazing chocolate and shipping it. But what I also saw on the factory floor was that their equipment was constantly breaking in unexpected ways. That's actually a really similar thing to programming. You set something up working, but actually there's so much complexity that things are always going to break in ways you never anticipated. And being able to work on that is your most important skill. Our job as software engineers is to run into walls and then figure out ways around them. Because this is so central to software, you really need to get to know your debugger. Pack the code. Organize and compose. Back to the chocolate factory again. The floor is bustling, people are shipping chocolate. But if you think about it, they're not just sending one piece of chocolate in the mail. They're actually taking individual bars and grouping them into, say, a pack of five. And then grouping that pack of five into a group with other different packs and then those into boxes and those bigger boxes into containers. What that enables them to do is to be able to highly organize things and scale from very minute details into really, really big shipments. So if you wanna ship product, you really need to know that your job as a software engineer is to contribute to these composed ways of building products, building things that can be packaged into bigger and bigger packages and highly organized. And if you think about what you're building as reusable tools, whether that's a tool that can be used in multiple places in the factory or that's very neat and cohesive so it can be passed along the factory floor, you'll start to write code that's easier to maintain, easier to share, and less buggy. Finally, don't worry about finding the perfect job early on. Story time. I started to do this thing where I would get up extra early and actually go to Pinterest's building and I could actually sneak into Pinterest and have this little cafe on the outside and order a chocolate chip cookie and a chai latte. As I sat there, I had to take a breather and look at some of the creative things that really inspired me. And that grounded me, but it also made me feel kind of frustrated and confused because I wasn't doing all of those kinds of projects or doing that kind of creativity in my day-to-day -day job. And I thought to myself, wow, maybe I went to the wrong company. Who am I kidding? I only got accepted by one company when I graduated. So. But I want you to know, no matter where you start as a programmer, the skills you will learn there are so foundational that they will apply to whatever you do next. Once you get a bit of experience under your belt, you are super, super in demand and you can basically go exactly to the job you want. Even if you just stopped coding and totally changed careers, coding teaches your brain how to take a massive problem beyond what you can imagine doing and break it down again and again and again until you get to a single line of code you can write. And that is a skill that honestly, most people don't have. If you're struggling, if you're feeling like you're in the wrong spot, if you're feeling like you don't have what it takes like you're failing your team, like you should be so much better than you are now, you are not alone. I have been there so much. I even get there sometimes these days and it's completely normal. The struggles you have will get resolved. You're going to keep growing and you're going to get to do amazing things that you never thought you could do before. I wanna say, I love you. I'm excited for whatever lies ahead in your career and you can do this. Let's do this together.